Okay, uh, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I speak. Uh, we have, we, we did, uh, what is that, baptism, and we have gone through some of the key points and some of the questions raised. So, I'm wondering if you have any question on baptism. Otherwise, we'll move on to another uh, doctrine. Uh, any question on that? So I think I think for the past few days what we have done is like you do not just memorize verses, right? And you should be able to uh, learn to be uh, a bit more fluid if you like if you know what I'm saying. Being able to link verses together to yes. explain uh, you know the, the the doctrine of God. Now you find that so far what we have done is yeah, you know the verses we use actually are more than what you have been given before. Is it also? So practically, many of the passages in the New Testament can be used for what? For the support of our doctrine. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Right? So again, I said there is no shortcut to, to the study of the doctrine. You need to put your heart, your mind, your soul into it. If, if your heart, your mind and soul are not there, I tell you, very soon you, you will forget everything. It's true. It's not easy to forget it. Yes, it's true. It's very easy to forget. Now, what do you have? Written through. Not only that, I think sometimes you have to like work through it. Work through it. You get what I'm saying? Study. 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 You know, like... Um, we talk about baptism. Actually, you know, when we talk about baptism, the focus is on the forgiveness of sin, isn't it? And when you read like Acts, yeah, I'll just show you some example yeah, again. Okay, we turn to Acts. Yeah? <clears throat> we read uh, chapter... <clears throat> apart from chapter 2 and chapter 22, right? Apart from that two verses. Yeah? Okay, I want you to read uh, chapter... Let me see... Okay, <clears throat> we turn to chapter 10. Uh, chapter, uh, chapter 10. Mm. Acts chapter 10. Mm. Verse 43. Yeah, the one we mentioned, isn't it? Okay, verse 43. Yeah? Uh, if you read verse 43, what does it say? To him all the prophet witness that through his name, Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. Now, so when you look at the prophet, who are the prophets here? Who are the prophets? The Old Testament prophets. Old Testament prophets. You see, the thing they talk about, yeah, concerning Jesus Christ, eventually points to what? The remission of sin. Now, can you see the, the how can I say, the discrepancy today, yeah? as compared to other churches. They don't talk about remission of sin. Right? They only believe that once you raise your hand or whatever, your sins are forgiven. are forgiven, that kind of thing. Right? Now, so remission of sin actually is one of the key concepts yeah, in, in the one, in, in, in Acts of the Apostle. And it's also in, in the Gospel of Luke. That's why Jesus said repentance the message of repentance and the remission of sin must be preached to all nations in my name. In His name. In the name of Christ. Alright? <clears throat> now, I also want you to read... Uh, uh, okay. There's a verse, yeah? We read chapter 11 first. Chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 18. Now, here... Uh, Peter went back to Jerusalem and some people challenged him, you know, and saying that he was eating with the Gentiles. Because the Jew did not have the habit of mingling with the Gentiles in, in this way, like eating with them, you know, staying in, in, their, in their house or whatever. It's like it's too much for, for any Jews to take. Right? <clears throat> now, after, after Peter has explained, yeah, I want you to read uh, verse 18. When they heard these things, they, began, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, 
then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Now, what does it mean, repentance to life? Then you need to look at what has happened to the house of in Cornelius, isn't it? Yes. Yeah? Now, so some people said, yeah, some people said, like in Acts chapter 10, there's no repentance. Does, does Acts chapter 10 talk about repentance? No. Uh, but in chapter 11, repentance is mentioned, isn't it? So, Jesus said, the message of repentance and the forgiveness of sin must be preached to all nations in, in His name, in the name of Christ, meaning Jesus, yeah? Now, so, when, when, when Peter said, the people said, yeah, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. What does it mean? The, per the family must have repented, must have gone through the process of Baptism. baptism. That's why some people say, what? Well, you need to repent, that's it. Is that enough? No, no. You can use this to prove to them. Use this. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, how, how, how has God granted to the Gentile repentance to life? That is, you can read chapter 10, verse 43 onwards. This is how you explain it. So sometimes you don't have to argue with, with whoever. If you said repentance is enough, yes, you, you can say yes, it's enough. Depend on how you explain it. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, what is repentance unto life? Then you show him chap verse, chapter 10. You get what I'm saying? Okay, there's one more. I recall one more uh, passage uh, for, for you to think about. Um, we turn to Acts chapter chapter 3. Chapter 3. <coughs> Mm. Now, verse 19, yeah? 19. Repent therefore and be converted, that your sin may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Okay? Some people might say, we need to repent and turn to God, that's it. You know? If you want to get baptized, then fine, you can baptize. Yeah? Yeah? But here is like repentance and conversion yeah, are enough for the blotting out of sin. You get what I'm saying? Yeah? Now, how would you answer that? Because this is what uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Peter says, isn't it? Okay. Now, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 26 again. Acts chapter 26. Now, this is a bit more like, um, more, okay then, a bit more academic, right, in a way, because you need to know the words before you can explain it. But to me, whether you know or not, is, it doesn't really matter. But if you know it, then it's better for you. Okay? Now, I want you to read the chapter 26. <clears throat> now, this is what the God has given, you know, the mission to Paul. Okay, now verse 18, yeah? uh, to open their eyes in order to turn. You know, to turn uh, in the original text is the same as to convert, to convert. Okay, the same words I'm talking about in uh, chapter 3, verse 19, be converted. Be converted means to turn. You get what I'm saying? Same, same root words. All right, now. Again, he said, from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Now, first you can look at what God has given to Paul. Right? God wants to use Paul to turn people to God, isn't it? Yeah? That they may receive forgiveness of sin. Now, when you look at the teaching of Paul, did he ever, did he ever teach that you just need to repent and that's it, you have turned to God? No. no. You understand what I'm saying? You find that in the teachings of Paul, he always talks about what? Repentance, remission of sin. Is it not so? Yes. Even when he talked about his own conversion. You know what he highlighted? Okay, 
Now, what he highlighted is not, you know, the, the, the moment when he was struck down by the light of God. You get what I'm saying? And it's not the moment when God spoke to him. He questioned God. God, the whole Lord, who are you? What shall I do? No, it's not about that. What did Paul, what did Paul say when he talked about his own conversion? He talks about Ananias questioning him. Why are you waiting? Huh? Friend, arise and get baptized and wash away your sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, that's why if you know the facts, the other thing I want to uh, uh, make it clear to you, you know, when you talk about a passage, a story in the Bible concerning what? Concerning uh, uh, the doctrine of the church, you must know the facts very clear, very well so that you can use them anytime. It becomes part of your what? Part of your presentation, if you like. Okay, if not argument. Right? Part of your presentation. Because you know the facts well, so your preaching becomes very convincing. When people listen to it, oh yeah, they have nothing to say, isn't it? They cannot argue against you. Is it not so? Huh. Like, like the other night we said, yeah? the first night, you know, to most Christians, there would be very, what, uh, uh, they, they would be very uh, happy when God, when God speaks to them directly, isn't it? Mm. You see, God has spoken to me. How can you say that I'm not in Christ? Mm. How can you say that I don't belong to Jesus? That kind of thing. Right? Look, you know, I was so ill before. And when I pray, you know, I saw a vision. God came down and healed me. How can you say I'm not in Christ Jesus? That kind of thing. But you can use the example of Paul. How he was converted. But what is the most important thing? Forgiveness of sin. Do you, do you, do you know what I'm saying now? Yes. Right? This is how you emphasize. Okay, now, coming back to um, uh, chapter 26, uh, verse 18. Yeah? Chapter 26, verse 18. To turn them from darkness to light is equal to to be converted from darkness to light. The same word, same word is used. Okay, now, actually it's very simple. We, we, we all know about... <clears throat> now, some people ask, conversion, right? Now, when does conversion occur? When does conversion occur? Okay, now, now we have two verses, very important verses. Eh? Number one, Acts 2.38, am I? And the other one is 22.16. Yeah? Okay. It, what does it say? It's through baptism that our sins are washed away. This is what the Bible says, isn't it? Okay. Now, if you look at chapter 2, verse 8, yeah? Chapter 2, verse 8, it said what? Uh, repent. And be baptized. Be baptized, is it? Yes. And then, sin forgiven, yeah? Yes. Okay, now, when you look at chapter 3, verse 19, repent, be converted, and then, sin blotted out. Am I right? So, when... I, I will ask them, you know, anyone who said that, I will ask, when does conversion occur? When does it occur? In baptism. baptism. When your sins are forgiven, in baptism, you are converted. It means you have turned to God. If you are still in sin, then how can you say you have turned to God? You get what I'm saying? Yes. Actually, it's quite simple. Is that clear? Yes. Are you, are you following me? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, any other questions? Any other question?
sometimes I feel that, you know, um, what we need to do is we, we pay a bit more attention to the, um, to the passages that we read. We must not just read like, oh, because the church said that, uh, Baptism is for the forgiveness of sin. Therefore, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Acts chapter 22, verse 16, that's it, Amen. Oh, then I can go and preach. No. <laughs> right? Now, actually, every part of it, yeah, must what? Must, must be remembered well. Okay, just to, to tell you how important it is to, to know your facts well. Right? Now, some people said to you, eh? some people may say to you, Look, if you talk about the Holy Spirit, yeah, we always say speaking in tongues is the only evidence. Is that not true? Yes. Yeah? Speaking in tongues is the only evidence. Then I said to you, what about, you know, in the past I was such a bad guy. I was such a bad guy. Now, after conversion, I, I exhibit the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. How can you say that I don't have the Holy Spirit? I'm even better than those who speak in tongues. Yeah. I'm kinder... I'm more, more humble. Yeah, I'm more loving. How, how do you explain? You, Joseph, I pray two hours a day. How many hours do you pray? Right? Is it okay? So how, how do you answer it? If you know your facts, then you can answer. Yeah. How do you answer? It's not the walk of righteousness. <laughs> but, but even after you have the Holy Spirit, it's still you need to put effort into it, isn't it? Is that true? It's not the walk of righteousness. Yes. Yeah, I know. But, but if you don't demonstrate the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit, can you be saved? No. no. But do you, do you not think that we need to put effort into it? Now, my, my question is, some people might say, okay, some people might say, you know, after conversion, yeah, by the power of Christ, I'm showing what? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. I actually have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I don't speak in tongues only. Neither baptized. Neither baptized. Baptized already. Baptized already. Yes. They show the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay, now that's why I believe in this, yeah? <clears throat> the Bible always, always has the answer. Turn it to silence. Okay, never mind. We turn to Acts chapter 8, yeah? Okay. Acts chapter 8. Now can I ask, yeah? When did the people receive the Holy Spirit? In Acts chapter 8. The, some, the, those people in Samaria, the believers in Samaria. Okay, that is in verse 16, isn't it? Verse 16. Uh, uh, verse 17. Then they lay hand on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So before that, none of them had received the Holy Spirit, yeah? Now, if you read the same chapter, verse 8. Okay, verse 8. Now, and there was great joy in that city. Is not joy an aspect of the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Does it mean that they have already received the Holy Spirit? No. no. You, you know what I'm saying? Actually, sometimes you don't even need to argue. If you know your facts well, sure. you get what I'm saying? Even a person without receiving the Holy Spirit, he can still demonstrate like the virtues. Uh, being joyful, being kind, yeah, being loving. Why? Because of the Word of God. But that does not mean that he has received the Holy Spirit. So when you show him, show, 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 show the person the fact, you shut him up. There's no argument. That was before they received the Holy Spirit. Is that not true? So having having the virtues of the of the fruit of the Spirit is not equal to receiving the Spirit. But for those who have already received the Spirit they must demonstrate the fruit. the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So what is that joy? Hmm? That joy. 
It's from the word of God. When you believe in Jesus, it's given to you. You're happy that. Yeah, this salvation. Salvation. It is true that uh, mm. those who those who believe in Jesus, <coughs> they have known the truth in true deception. Mm. They will rejoice even yes. without the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's true. Just as uh, it happened to me also that I was mm. joyful that oh now I have found the truth. <laughs> okay. So any question on this? Yes. In John chapter, chapter 4. John chapter 4, okay. Chapter? John 3. John 3. Yes, please ask. John chapter 3. Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Mm. He says, uh, Very, very, I said unto you, he said, A man is born of water and of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Uh, born of water and of the Holy Spirit means, does it mean that because of people who say, immediately you baptize, you receive Holy Spirit? Things in the water because the thought of them is born. No? We have the bone of water and they are, they are two separate things. They are two separate things. Let me let me ask one question to enter his home. The the pastor, the Baptist has the Holy Spirit. So if he <coughs> baptized the convent, it is the Holy Spirit who the baptizes baptist. in the water. So the person is baptized, is born of water and the Holy Spirit. If somebody asks that, this is how they ask sometimes. This is how they ask sometimes? Yes, because the Baptist has the Holy Spirit. When he baptizes the person, he is born of water and the Holy Spirit at the same time. But how can you born of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit at the same time? No, because the Holy Spirit three, baptizes three, him. Right? Three, the three witnesses about the baptism in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now again, I, again, it's very simple. Yeah. Then you need to come back to Acts of the Apostle, chapter eight. They were baptized already. Now, unless unless they define very differently. Okay. This is where the uh, I believe. Yeah. This is where the problem is. We need to define first. Okay. Now, pour of water. What is pour of water to you? What is pour of water? What is pour of pour of the spirit? What is that to you? Receiving the Holy Spirit, is it? Yes. Receiving the Holy Spirit evidence by tongue speaking. Yes. Yeah? Yes. That's the traditional belief, isn't it? That, that yes. The born of the Spirit. The born of the Spirit, isn't it? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Now, here it said, be, I thought I mentioned this right, the other day, being born again. Remember, we talk about being born again in 1 Peter chapter 1? Yes. Verse 3? Yeah? yeah. Okay. Being born again, just to prove that, yeah, actually include these two, right? And this is baptism, and this is receiving the Spirit, yeah? Okay. Now, being born again, according to 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 3, there are two key points I mentioned, you remember? Yeah. One is mercy, mercy, isn't it? Yeah. Mercy. mercy, it's according to... God's mercy, and we talk about what? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, is it? Yeah. Meaning, before you receive mercy, you are not a people. After you have received mercy, you are a people. Yeah. Right? Now, how can we receive God's mercy? Titus 3.5, is it? Yeah. Receive 
according to His mercy, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that is through washing or regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. Can you see now? This is how you prove it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the other thing is through the resurrection of Jesus. Remember the second point? Yeah? yeah? Now, when you, look at, when you look at baptism, baptism is to go through the process of being dead, being burial, being buried, and being resurrected together with Christ, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what's all? Yes. Now, again, when you talk about receiving the Holy Spirit, what does that tell us about? It proves that Christ has been raised yes. from the dead and ascended back to heaven. Yes. And that's why Peter said, because of that, He now gives you the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Which you now see and hear, hear and see. Is that not true? Yes. Uh, so when you look at this in this way, then... There's a difference. There is a difference. Definitely a difference. Okay, now, I want to let you understand this, yeah? Being born again is not a point in life. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's not like, after you're baptized, no, that's it, no. Being born again is a process. Yes. Okay? Now, being born again begins with baptism. Baptism is the starting point of our journey of faith. Mm -hmm. Why do we say that? Because in baptism, our sins are forgiven and we are enjoined into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the starting point, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now, after that, what must you do? You pray for the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now, after you have received the Holy Spirit, you need to what? Walk by the Holy Spirit. Is that so? Yes. Okay, now, think about this, huh? Let's say, should we, somewhere down the line here, alright, if we choose not to obey the Holy Spirit, are we in the process of being born again? No. no. no we are out. Then we say we are born of the, what? The flesh. We are not of the Holy Spirit anymore. So that's why it's a process. You must think that, oh, there's only two points. Uh, you receive the Holy Spirit when you speak in tongues and that's it. No. No. It's a continual process until you die. The day you die, remain what? Born again. Okay. I want to show you some verses. Huh? Well, first John. <clears throat> first John, yeah? Okay, we first, uh, where is it? He... Okay, we read chapter 3. First John, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, verse 9. Whoever has been born of God, born of God means to be born again, okay? Those who have been born again, what is that? Does not sin. For his seed, meaning Jesus, remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God. Now, should someone here yeah, who stay outside Christ, or let's say he has sinned, never, re never repent, then the person is not born of God. Or he has left the process of being born again. You get what I'm saying? That's the idea. So, being born again is not just a point. Or like, oh, receive the Holy, uh, baptism is one point, uh, receiving the Holy Spirit is another point. No. Together they form one, an entire process. But they are not one and the same. They are different. You understand what I'm saying? Is that clear? Okay. Now, one more verse. We read the First John. Chapter 5. Now, verse 4, yeah? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Okay? Now, if we have been born, if we have been born again, to overcome it, obviously it takes time, isn't it? It takes time to overcome. But, but if we are moving this way, okay? Let's say this is our target, yeah? We want to, we are here, we want to achieve that. So, we may make a mistake in time, but we're still progressing, okay? Yes. We reach that, that level of perfection. We overcome, mm -hmm. right? 
But some people is going to yes. this way. It's different though. Yes, yes. different. You, you get what I'm saying? Yes. And people who are going like in a in a downward spiral, yeah. Mm -hmm. Downward spiral. Mm -hmm. There are people who never who okay. never com confess their sin, never admit their wrongs or whatever, by going down this way. Is that okay? But it's going upward. Overcomes the world. Sometimes we, 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 we see that uh, we still have not completely overcome. Right? Now, I want you to read Revelations. Revelations chapter 22. Oh, sorry, 21, yeah? Uh, verse 7. Twenty one verse seven He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Okay. You finally you must overcome meaning is a process, isn't it? You must finally reach the level of perfection desired by the Lord. That the Lord wants us to to attain to or to reach. Okay, so any other question you want to ask? Oh. People usually ask the question is why the old day go back down in the knee of the father and in the knee of the place. Okay. People usually ask this question why during the old thing day People battle in the knee of the song, the, the Holy Spirit, and the battle. I, I don't get it. I said, why do the old days, in the Old Testament, people baptized in the Trinity? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is the Old Testament. The old old day. Day. Now, it is not Old Testament. I said, people used to ask. Now, people used to ask. Uh, this kind of question. People ask the question. See, uh, why yeah, is yeah, the question. People baptize in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. 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 That's why, do you not realize that even within the true Jesus church, any workers or any minister who has left the truth, you find that the person can no longer see the truth anymore. Yes. Can't even explain. Is that not true? true? You ask him to talk about the Holy Spirit, I tell you, you struggle, right? What? He can't explain anymore. Joseph, can you explain? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trash. <laughs> Joseph, can you explain? <laughs> That's why some people used to say, mm. uh, ah, for me, in my church, I can sing. Mm. People say, I can do this because of the Holy, I have the Holy Spirit, so I can sing. I can do this. I say no. It's not like that. Then I mean example. If you want to, if you want to go to find a job as a company, if the company no employ you inside the company, the skill that you have, you cannot demonstrate that your skill unless the company do employ you before you can demonstrate your skill. If you are capital, you are amazing before you can do it. So you have to have the Holy Spirit before you have the gift of the Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, how can you have the gift of the Holy Spirit? No. Yes. No. 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 You have to have the Holy Spirit, which no. is tongue speaking. No, no I, I think I think I think I think that has to be very careful. You know why? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. No, you know why? Because no. Listen, once you enter into the process of being born again, obviously you can demonstrate the virtues of God. Yeah. Even though you have not received the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You think because you are already inside. Uh, inside. And this is a lifelong thing. 
You yes. have to continue until the day you die yes. to maintain that. Yes. You get what I'm saying? When you're baptized. You are yeah. enter into the process of being born again even though you have not received the Holy Spirit. But you must make sure that you receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Somewhere down the line, you have, you have to have the Holy Spirit. I also see too late. The Holy Spirit. They are different. Yes, I they, agree. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is different from the kings. Mm. Mm. I will call yeah. you. Yes. yes. Yeah. The it's not different. Different. It's only based on the. It's two different things. The gift of the Holy Spirit. They are the gift of the, 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 okay. the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, some. They are, like they, are, okay, they, that okay. they are members, they are, they, are, they, are, they are believers who have not received the Holy Spirit can preach much better. Yes. They can preach, oh. they can explain the better much better than those who have, they have the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. We are not talking about the church. We are not talking about the church. It's not yet. Like Douglas, for example. Douglas is a great example. The person that preached to Douglas was only two times worshiping us. And he was in the true seeker class. He went back and preached the gospel to to Douglas and Douglas came, two of them baptized the same day. Even there is another one here. No, no, I'm not I'm not yes, I, I know there they, mm -hmm. there can be exception to the case. I'm talking about generally. Mm -hmm. There are some believers who have not received the Holy Spirit can preach better. Yeah. Explain the Bible much better. Yes. In our church or outside. Our church. Our church. Our church. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say? We are talking about outside. Our church. No, I'm talking about our church. <laughs> we our church for that one we know. But we are talking about outside. Our church, like oh, yeah. uh, Solomon said, when he baptized, he is happy. Mm -hmm. That is what? The fruit of the, the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Joy, joy. 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 That is the fruit of the Spirit. Uh -huh. Yes, that one really can happen. You, you know, but you know, I'm talking our, about our, outsiders. Yes, our, our, our understanding is it's like the Spirit must live in us that we have the Holy Spirit. Actually, yes. even before He's being done, the Spirit is there to guide us. Yes. He's not, he's not, he does not live in us yet. He has not lived in us yet. Yeah. But, but He's, he's there guiding us. Yeah, yes. yes. The first of all, uh, that one mm. is truth. But mm. Because Jesus said to him, before He was ascended, He said, he in the Bible says, He prayed upon the mm. disciples, He said, mm. Receive the gift. The Holy Spirit. Mm. Does that mean that they have to speak in tongues? No, they haven't. You understand me? Yeah. So, it, when someone receives baptism, the God, the Spirit of the Lord, is there to guide him. Yes. <laughs> but Hallelujah. the opinion of receiving the Holy Spirit is that, that he must speak in tongues. That is so it. No, that it means that the Holy Spirit has not yes. yet to yes. 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 him. Yes. But this one is a bit. Tricky, you know, you know, you know the false teachers. Uh, they are, they are, they are, <laughs> there's a brother, there's a brother, former, he's not here in this church. That every day, if we talk about the Holy Spirit, if you are not confident, you is your friend now. So, oh, my friend, you remember, do you remember this yeah. brother yeah. in Ghana? Where is he? Where is he now? <laughs> so, I will look for him to come and see you. He left the church. Huh? He left the church. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, when he and so we are now. The kids yeah. so no more yeah. from Nigeria. Yeah. So uh, uh, throw him. If someone asks you question, if you are not confident with the scripture, you will fall away. Uh, <laughs> if you are strong with the scripture, you will just uh, tell him. We just open it. You are not a member of the church. Please go and look for another church. So you must, before you first sing, you must read the Bible. Because he read the Bible at least <coughs> twice sometimes, according to him, twice a year or once a year. <coughs> Tell him, and he was <coughs> Understanding comes from God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Understanding comes from humility. Submission to the will of the Lord. Then you even... Yes. But what can I say? So he, no, no, I don't. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. <laughs> no. I don't want to meet him. It's okay. 
Oh, it's okay. I know who he is. I know. <laughs> we met before in Ghana. I know. <laughs> I know the guy. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to ask a question. Mm. A person who has received uh, the baptism and he has not received the Holy Spirit and when he died, what will happen to him? Okay. A person who has been baptized but has not received the Holy Spirit, assuming that he died without receiving the Holy Spirit, can he be saved? Mm -hmm. Meaning he has a speaking he has in spoken in tongues. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh. I think this is quite straightforward. Yeah, because the Bible says the Holy Spirit is promised, meaning is to be given, right? Mm -hmm. To those who believe. The Bible said to those who believe, according to John chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Unless you are not a believer. So someone who died, let's say what you said is correct, okay? Someone died without receiving the Holy Spirit, it means that he doesn't really believe. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah. So we just <laughs> impart the down, down. <laughs> okay. We turn to John, John chapter 7. <laughs> this question, this question is so good. Huh? The question okay, we turn to John 7, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Don't bully him. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. John 7. Okay, what does it say? <clears throat> 37. Uh, 39, actually. 39. 39, yeah? Okay, 39. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive. Can you see the... I think here the language is very good. This, he's, the Bible is using believing. Meaning your, 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 your belief must be continuous. Okay? Let's say you are baptized here. Right? You believe up to this point. And then you don't believe anymore and you died. You think you will receive? No. It's only given to those who believe. Believe in Jesus, believe in His words, believe in, obviously in the church. You get what I'm saying? That's why it's very straightforward. So meaning the person must have lost his faith. You know, I want to tell you a testimony. There, there was a brother, he passed away. <laughs> he, he was not a very good person before. So... Because uh, he, I think he was baptized from young, since young. So after that, he left the church. And God chastised him, you know. So you know what happened? He got struck. Oh. Semi-paralyzed. And then he realized that he had done wrong. He came back he came back to the church. He came back to the church. He prayed for the Holy Spirit more than 10 years. No spirit came in. Pray, pray, pray. Every day. Pray. Sometimes when you go and see him, you miss him. When you went to see him, he cried. No Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit. I'm not sure whether God still love me. And pray, pray, pray. And then I think after 15 or 17 years, the second stroke came. Oh, completely paralyzed. No Holy Spirit. Completely paralyzed. You know that time, you know what happened? I went with my wife to the hospital to, to visit him. After he got the second stroke. So, I said to my wife, I think we better go. Why? Because he, he was not responding. And the only thing is the eyes was like blinking. Like acknowledging that, oh, okay, I know, I know you, you are here. I know you are here. So I said to my wife, why don't we just pray for him and then we go. You know, during the prayer, I lay hand on him. Suddenly his mouth opened and the tongue, even my wife, could hear. So after the prayer, my wife said, did he receive the Holy Spirit? I said, he received the Holy Spirit. I think two days later, he died. Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, unbelievable. No, I, I said, we, we, when we were there, we were so thankful to God. God finally gave him the Holy Spirit. He must, I tell you, he has done something very seriously wrong. But he prayed, prayed, prayed. It was more than 10 years, 15 years, and got two strokes. Boom. 
You know when he got the first stroke, huh? he still wanted to go to the church, you know. He get the members, the youngsters to carry him to the church. So finally we said to him, how can you expect the youngsters to carry you every week to the church? It's not possible. He still want to pray, pray, pray. The second stroke came back. But thank God he died. Because the question that <coughs> this man asked, uh, mm. he said the similar thing happened to our place. Mm. I went and opened a new branch at a, a certain place. And uh, the pastor supposed to reset it, the date that he supposed to baptize me. So when he went, he went and met some few people. Some of them are traveling to other places. So the, one of the man told the pastor that they should baptize the few, few ones. And the pastor refused to baptize them. He said he wait up to those who are traveling to come before he baptized. So the moment he went, that very the, the one of them became very sick. That. So for that one, how, how are you going to do? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> well, Ticket said, said we should give him money to go and baptize the people. He collected the money, everything, mm. and he could not baptize the people. So I don't know. I can't comment on that time because I'm not in the position to say it. It's not baptized. That's why we need really to. The amount to receive Holy Spirit too. He alone, when he came in there, he alone, all the people, he alone received him. But he could not baptize. That one I don't know. I really don't know. If you ask me, I don't know. Then, those have been baptized for so long, they have to have police, but they should force to get it. They should force to pray to receive it. Yes, that's why they have. That's why I think I tell you the difficulty now, 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 now is there is, yeah? What? Because there are, there are so many distractions. Your heart really is not there. If you, if you cannot get rid of distraction on the, in, from the world, you cannot pray. Seriously, I, I mean, it's very difficult to pray for the Holy Spirit now. Please. As you get older. It's true. So that's why we need to be very focused. We really have the power to re remove all sort of, you know, allurement or what entertainment or whatever, you know, media that can really affect mm. the mind. You it's have to chuck them crazy. away. Otherwise you'll be... I tell you, it doesn't matter who you are, you know. Even a full-time worker can be, can be what? Can be drawn what away by we? this. Yes. Mm. Serious. I Okay, I think I think it's enough for today. Mm, yeah. Okay, you got a question? Uh, concerning the mm. religion, mm. Uh, I think uh, we those who receive the Holy Spirit already, mm. uh, we can also lose the, lose the Holy Spirit. Eh? Yes, if, if, we, if, if you stop believing. To believe. Yes, if you stop believing, then you will lose it. Eh? If you lose the Holy Spirit. It's simple. So if you're, if yeah, you continue in your belief, yes. that was my John 8, 30, John eight. Yeah, the same. John eight eighteen. Yeah. If people don't think that going to be baptized, then you are finished. Finished. No. No, it's the process. No, no, no. Because when you go to some place, you go to some place. This is how they can see. Because because you can see that they don't force. They don't. They don't pray. They don't force to pray. Yes, spirit. They relax. Because the leaders, because the leaders don't teach them well. The leaders must teach them, must pray with them, whatever. Even the leaders say they don't. Of course. Uh, yeah. Because when you go to some place, people like to speak in West, pray in West, and then they don't. They, they, they feel that when you baptize, and you are washing your feet, you are, you are, you are free. And you are just to come to Sabbath church, you are free. Questions? You got questions? You got questions? No?